So going back to the answer to the first question, it's very similar to, we can always place the responsibility on their own entities, so let's hope that the CEO of Facebook, the CEO of Google, the CEO of Tencent, and the CEO of Baidu are going to be good people and let them regulate themselves. And this might not work out. Some good process that is working very well is actually with Wikipedia. It's a curated process in which a lot of people are all the time checking for the sources, checking for the quotes, checking if actually the information that is there is, is good. So that curation process works very well. Now, uh, even that one can be affected by the amount of people who say, let's go to an example. Earth was created uh, uh, 4.5 billion years ago. That's what science says. But there are some sources that say that the Earth was created six to 7,000 years ago, which is the creationism theory, right? It's, in the US, a lot of people believe that actually the Earth is 1,000 years old, some, uh, a couple of thousand, seven, 6,000 years old. Now, this knowledge is uh, scary because it's actually not true. It's, I mean, why do I say it's not true? Because I have read the science of geology and I have read about math, uh, math and I know how the principles that could have brought the Earth to existence need to take at least those 4.5 billion years of, years of existence. Now, if we let either the people creating the content or even governments, governments can also be uh, chosen. It was, uh, I love democracy, but Winston Churchill used to have this quote. The best argument against democracy is an average talk, it's, it's a five minute talk with an average voter. So even ourselves can make mistakes. Even democracy is a good uh, tool, and it's actually allowing us to, to let everyone have a voice. A lot of people can also be wrong. And it can happen in the US, or it can happen in Germany, it can happen in a lot of places. So one good example is when you have elections that are by 50 to 50, 49 to 51, at least half of the population is wrong with the decision they have made. And even though democracy is not about being right or wrong, it's about the, the capacity to express those things. So even governments, even public institutions can have their bias or can, are, cannot be good entities for curation. So I think that the right tool would be going back to the individual. But how can you remove that bias from the individual? Can you have, how can you have people who are not actually having their own biases, their own dissonance, their own cognitive bias? So my, our approach with my wife that we have for that is logic and mathematics. It's allowing people to be critical thinkers, something that even Socrates wanted to do with the, with the Greek philosopher's era. It was, they had their Greek gods, and he came and said, why do we have gods? Oh, because it's written, everybody talks about that. And he said, don't you want to challenge that? He said that to the students. The punishment when he, he was placed to death by the Greek Senate, by the Athenian Senate, right? They didn't like it that he was making people question things. But at this point, we're still in a lot of countries, women and men have the chance to question and to challenge. And I guess that's the way. If we as individuals manage to say, no, I don't like what you are saying or what she is saying just because it's not logic, instead of I don't like it because it doesn't agree with my own ideas, with my own bias, we have more chances to become as individuals and later on we expand that as a society as our own content moderators.